Hello and welcome back to our ranged only challenge in Bannerlord. Now, before we begin, we are still at war against the Southern Empire, but I just want to go into this tournament here because I believe there's actually a, yes, there is a very, very good item here. And I actually, wow, this is pretty fun. Okay, this is going to be pretty cool. One versus one rounds are always, in my opinion, pretty interesting and uh, kind of enjoyable to participate in obviously if this guy is just going to fall over before us then obviously it's well going to result in that of course but uh, yes <laughs> i was actually hoping that he might put up a bit more of a fight especially considering i don't have a very good one-handed weapon skill but it's all right it's okay come on come on fellow oh he, he's just got a he's just got a knife He's going to be terrible. Oh no, this is bad. Okay, well, there's Mornid. Wow, he actually... Wow, he almost killed me, to be honest. That was pretty crazy. Take him down. Yes, there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to have to be a little bit careful. Oh, nice. Look at that, look at that. We have another person on the other side there wanting to do damage to this fellow. Hopefully, we're going to have that happen. Let's just uh, be very careful here. I'm just going to stand here. <laughs> I was facing... <laughs> that must have been an absolutely hilarious sight. Can you imagine if you were one of the bystanders in the um, in the audience and you just saw one combatant just kind of crouching behind one of the others and just waiting, waiting in, uh, in anticipation of the fellow maybe dying or maybe not, as the case may be, and then having a good old slashy time against him. So, yeah. Anyway, let's see if I can maybe do some damage here. Oh, close. Okay, that was a very, very close thrust there. I was very much hoping that we would be a little bit luckier. Yeah, that's all right. Oh, no, that was some damage. Yeah, he absolutely mistimed that. He thought to himself, no, he, he, he really thought that he had me right there. But no, that is not going to happen. Thank you very much. And that's also not going to happen. Great. All right. Not too bad. Now, obviously, the experience gain here is... Well, it's abysmal. Absolutely abysmal. But that's fine. You can fix that with mods if you want. Anyway, this is against a poacher. Poachers are really good when it comes to... Um, when it comes to archery, actually. They are pretty good when it comes to that. But one-handed? Probably not. As you can quite clearly tell. They just fold like some, uh, like some paper. Yeah. Like some paper. Or a bad poker player. Either one. Anyway, there we go. That is fantastic. And uh, we are now done. Now, that obviously is one of the best swords that you can get for, well, basically any reason. I believe it sells for a pretty decent amount. Yeah, so early on, if you can win tournaments, this is going to be a really, really good money earner for you. 1700 from that. Crazy good. Crazy good profit from it. And if we go into the smithy here, I'm actually hoping that it's going to give me something nice. Let me actually just take a quick look. Where is it? Uh, is it? Ah, uh, oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, it actually gives you some pretty decent stuff, as you can see. It gives you steel and it gives you iron. Now, obviously, if you take both of these, then you can combine them into fine steel as well. So, that's actually pretty cool. Now... Obviously, I don't have I don't have very good weapons here to really smelt down. I've started to be a little bit more selective about what I actually do with this because, as you can see, I can actually get some steel from here, which is really really good. Because, as I said before, you can then make those um, those bars of steel into fine steel, and then you can have a much easier time of making the uh, finer weapons in life. Suffice it to say. Anyway, I've just spent all of my energy, and we have none left. So let's make our way over to the enemy. Oh, yes. Okay, so Danustica has not come under siege. Um, our other town is also fine. Uh, the castle that we own is also good. And this is my current army setup. I only have 64 master archers, which i got to say is a little... A little on the low side, but I, I can't really do much about that unless I get into massive amounts of battles with looters and try to do a lot of tasks and things like that. But generally, I'm not that big a fan of doing huge amounts of tasks, especially considering there is a war going on. I just want to get into battles, like, for example, against this guy. Let's have a look. Okay, he might be actually kind of problematic. He's got some pretty good archers, as you can see right there. He's got 30 Imperial-trained archers. We might have some problems with him, but we're going to try. 
and go in there nevertheless. Uh, mm, the combat strength is in our favor. It is, but... Uh, I, I'm not sure if I actually buy, buy that, to be honest. I, I, I feel like sometimes the game gives a bit of a, a skewed perspective when it comes to what army is actually going to achieve victory in the end because I've had these kinds of battles before and somehow whether that is due to my own ineptitude you know with commanding the enemy commanding <laughs> commanding the enemy well I would love to command the enemy but no there's no such skill to be able to do that but yes commanding our allies commanding our troops making sure that our our uh, people are going where we want them to go and so on that sometimes doesn't go very well. However, when I play it perfectly fine without any mistakes made whatsoever and I'm still alive and yet we still lose, then it's just down to unit composition. And in my opinion, that is very much to do with the game and giving us a, a kind of skewed you know, way of looking at things. Anyway, I'm just going to try and do some damage here. Don't really mind about what kind of damage. Any damage is good. There we go. Got to be a little bit careful here as well. I really don't want to die. Oh, I'm not having the best of times here, am I? No, not at all. Okay, yeah, well, thankfully my forces are doing a reasonable job, I guess. Kind of reasonable. Yes, take out that fellow, thank you. Oh, I really wanted to shoot him, but no. Seems like I was unlucky enough to be inaccurate here. My archers are okay. I'm going to actually move them over here a little bit. I feel like the uh, slight incline in the forest area might be better for what they need to do. You can see here that we're actually having a bit more luck. Okay, we got to be careful. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. If, if I have one more death, then that is it. I have to drop all my stuff. So that is uh, that is definitely not something. Uh, it's not something I want to do. I'm I'm having a, a pretty good time with our uh, with our bow here and everything. So I'd like to try to maintain that as much as I can. We're going to skirmish. Oh, he moved. Oh yeah, that's what you get. He almost got me right there. Did you see that? He was pulling back the bowstring. He was ready. He was poised. Thankfully, we are not going to die today. Or at least I hope not. All right, so we did actually achieve victory, but at what cost? Let's take a look. Okay, so we didn't really lose anything too dramatic. Obviously, losing any archers and any master archers would be a pretty heavy blow to our continuing efforts to maraud around the land and try to eliminate as many vassals as possible. But thankfully, we only lost skirmishers, tribesmen, and recruits, which is obviously not that big a deal. I'm going to take all the prisoners here because we are relatively close by to our own town, and I should be able to then go over there and just place them in the dungeon. And uh, obviously, as you can see right here, thanks to the fact that the diplomacy in the uh, base game of Bannerlord is very basic at the moment, I am unable to shall we say, negotiate with our enemies to, um, you know, give them some, uh, some you know, to, to maybe make a little bit of extra money, you know, make some extra money from the negotiations and releasing them and so on and so forth. So, yeah, that would actually be super, super fun to do, but unfortunately, um, 
mods have done that in the past. Uh, Diplomacy Fixes. Diplomacy f uh, Fixes was one of the best mods for that and um, thoroughly enjoy using it. But unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, it is not available for the current version I am currently playing on. It might be now. Maybe there's an updated version. Maybe someone knows about that out there. And if you do, then uh, you can you can by all means let me know. But um, yeah, generally I do try to keep an eye on those kinds of things. But um, yeah, sometimes they just don't work, even if I want them to, unfortunately. Anyway, let's see if I can maybe do something about the Southern Empire. I don't know what kind of vassals are actually still even around at this point, to be honest. Okay, so let's just put these guys at the start here. We're going to put those guys at the start as well. There we go. I'm not entirely sure why the archers were at the very beginning. That doesn't really make much sense. This guy is obviously going to be joining us, which is pretty awful. Didn't really want him to do that. We are gaining some things, nothing really amazing. And where are all of my vassals? Ah, here we go. Hello there. Ah, Lycaron has been taken. Okay, so Lycaron is all the way over here, as you can see. This is the army that was attempting to take that and seems to be relatively successful in the effort, which is always good. And now we're going to try and eliminate Sarandon right here. We have a number of other... Ooh, that is a massive army. Okay. That is problematic. That is really, really bad. Okay. I'm not entirely sure what we're going to be able to do here, but we're going to go in for a manual battle against Sarandon because generally any single vassal I can get to die, as I've said before, is... Uh, that's pretty good. Any single time I can get them to, to have that... Um, have that kind of thing happen would be fantastic. Because even if the Southern Empire is completely eliminated, it makes no difference whatsoever because they're just going to jump ship and they're going to go somewhere else. So even if we defeat them, quote unquote, then it doesn't really make that much difference because then the vassals are just going to leave and they're going to join someone else. And that's obviously a big problem. So generally being able to completely remove them from the game, that on the other hand, that is very useful. So hopefully we'll be able to make that work. It seems like the auto-delegate is uh, seeing fit to just charge, basically. They, they seem to be charging into melee for some reason. I don't know why that is, but I suppose they have done the analysis and they know exactly what kind of units the enemy has. And so they're not really that scared at all because their morale is plummeting, they're running, they're routing, and uh, that is all they really needed to know, I guess. Anyway, there you go. 4.3 Renown, not too bad. Bear in mind that we're obviously attempting to level up as fast as we possibly can too. Not going to be taking any prisoners this time around because we are quite far away from our town to deposit them there. And we're actually going to try and do some damage against these two here if at all possible. Thankfully no vassals in the garrison here either. And once again we are going to just be going straight on in to the fight with Xena here. And we're going to do exactly the same thing where we're just going to auto-delegate basically these um, smaller fights. I think we can see what happens with the AI and see whether we like their strategy. Seems like most of the time they're just going to... Oh, hello there. Most of the time they're just going to charge in, which I don't have a problem with, really. I think that uh, sometimes charging in is definitely the way to go if you... Uh, dramatically outnumber the opponent. Oh, that was a nice hit. Unfortunately, that is not going to be a kill on Xena right there. Not a fatal kill, at least. That is just a knocking out. And that was a bad shot.
And there it is, not too bad. Unfortunately, she did manage to uh, survive, so we're just going to have to um, take her prisoner. I mean, that's the thing. Any single time you can do that as well, that is a pretty decent, smallish, minor victory. You know, it's not that, not that impactful, but I think that's pretty good. Anyway, owner of Lycaron, this is no, no, I can't vote for myself, right? I can actually vote for myself, but this is going to go to someone else. So let me, let me actually just see. Okay, I'm going to vote for Unkid here because he's already going to win. And personally, I'm kind of spread thin as it is. I'm, I'm having two towns and I have one castle. It's going to be very difficult for me to defend a third one that is so incredibly far away. This also gives me a nice opportunity to gain a massive, massive amount of charm experience. And as you can see, look at this. The Southern Empire isn't even that bad. They still have 3,200 combat strength, which is actually amazing if you think about it. And I'm very much hoping that they will not besiege Danustica. That really, really large army would be... Uh, that would be pretty bad. So I'm hopeful that after we are done with uh, Mr. Encurion here, I will be able to go and um, see if I can maybe reinforce my fief. And we'll see what happens with that. Because here's the thing. If I allow any of these fiefs to fall to our opponent... Unkid is going to lose a huge amount of confidence in me, and then I'm basically done. I'm probably not going to be seeing any more fiefs for the foreseeable future, which is obviously kind of bad. But, yeah, I can't really do much about that if there is a massive army breathing down my neck with 800 or 900 units. It's going to be very difficult for me to do anything against them. Although, if I'm already in the garrison, then I might be able to defend it with luck a huge amount of luck i would need to be able to do that Just need to find the guy. Where is he? Oh, apparently he's already been eliminated. Apparently he's already been eliminated. No, no, no. Yes, yeah, no, no. He's already gone. He's already gone. All right. I actually thought that um, <laughs> I would need to eliminate him myself, but no. Apparently he just ran in and died of his own accord, which is uh, perfectly fine with me. I don't have a problem with that at all. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. Danustica is indeed on the front lines. So let me see if I can head back there in time. There's Zakanis. I might be able to... You know what? Let's just go and attack him real quick. Can I actually even catch him? What, uh, how, how, how fast is he? Uh, he's 3... Wait a minute. He's 3.9. Okay, so he's 0.1 faster than me. So, unfortunately, that is not going to work. Uh, that is kind of unfortunate. We might be able to get one of these, though. 5.4, we're moving at 5.0. Ah, we can actually catch up to Jonna here, I believe. But again, this is delaying me from returning to Danustica, so I'm taking a, a rather substantial risk by doing this, and we're not going to be gaining a huge amount of, well, basically anything by doing this, to be honest. I'm just going to auto-resolve this, because taking her prisoner is, uh, well... <laughs> as good as any kind of thing and especially considering the chance for them to actually perish is quite low and we are apparently going to be making what no no i don't no look at that 51 i really what's it look at that i literally uh, why did they make why did they make peace that is we're paying them now look Look at this. We're paying them 230 dinars when we have the advantage in almost every way. Are they serious about that? 
I really have no clue. Ah, sometimes. Mm. Sometimes Bannerlord and its diplomacy and the, and the AI's decision making can be very frustrating. I mean, really. No person in their right mind would be taking a truce agreement or any kind of peace agreement where you have to pay your opponent, especially one that is 1800 less combat strength, and uh, they actually had less combat strength at the time because I had so many of their vassals taken prisoner, and now this is what's happened. So, yeah. All because, and now this is the reason why this happened, by the way, all because the Southern Empire declared war against the Kuzate. That's it. That's the only reason. That is the only reason that they decided to do that, which, in my opinion, is absolutely preposterous, and we really should not be giving them any kind of favor at all. We should be pushing the advantage as much as we possibly can, but unfortunately, sometimes democracy is just, that's just how it goes, you know? They all voted, and we had someone voting against them. I actually did lunk on um, a 100 influence to be able to um, make that a 51% victory for us, but apparently that makes no difference. So, there you go. <laughs> Not entirely sure why that happened, but there you go. That is indeed the way that things go sometimes, and, um, well, thankfully this is not real life, I guess. Although those kinds of things have happened in real life, and worse things have happened. I mean, it's just a game after all, so I don't really mind. But still, it is a little bit frustrating to see the AI make such silly decisions, especially considering we are the ones that now have to pay. Well, technically, our faction has to pay them. And hopefully they're not going to be taking from my own personal coffers or something like that. If they have to take from my, my money, then I'll be even more annoyed, to be honest. But there you go. I don't think there's much I can do about it. Oh, yes. Ah, let me, let me shoot them extremely accurately now. There we go. Okay, not too bad. We're going to get some good leather from this, which I suppose is decent, and we're going to get our forces leveled up just that little bit more, which I suppose is okay. <sighs> but yeah, these are the kinds of things I'm going to have to do now off screen. And that is basically that. We have 75 Master Archers now, which is pretty good, and I really wanted to get into some more fights. I really badly wanted to get into some more fights something much much larger than what we had uh, what we had been doing there but if that's the way it goes then that's the way it goes i can only hope that we're going to have another war declaration relatively soon and we'll see if that actually happens anyway that's going to be it for this episode i thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time